Hey Canucks fans, according to the Athletics' Corey Pronman, the Vancouver Canucks have the third best prospect pool in the entire NHL. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, September the 10th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. For those of you who subscribe to The Athletic, and hope most of you do, they are doing very well. They actually just passed 1 million combined views, uh, which is really good considering, you know, the, the shape of the media industry right now. But anyways, uh, as part of The Athletic, you get not only great articles by people like Thomas Drance and Harmon Dial um, and Wyatt Arndt from a Vancouver uh, perspective, but you also get all these NHL, not many sports, but especially NHL writers that you can follow from across the NHL. One of them is Corey Pronman, and he's known as a, a prospects and drafting guru. And he every year he does this organizational ranks with respect to prospects. And this year, the Vancouver Canucks are ranked number three in the entire league. The only two teams ahead of them are the New Jersey Devils and the New York, New York Rangers. We don't know the who's number two and who's number one. I guess we'll know that tomorrow or Saturday at the latest, but probably both tomorrow. But yeah, Vancouver is number three ahead of teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, ahead of teams like uh, you know the Carolina Hurricanes, the LA Kings, Ottawa Senators, teams that have are known to have some pretty good farm systems in place. So. Uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, the rankings, the, how he ranked the players, and and why he gave the Canucks such a high ranking. So the criteria was this: if you're twenty, if you're under twenty-two, so you're not even twenty-two years um, uh, old yet, then you're already in. Or you can be up to twenty-five years old. Twenty-five is the max, as long as you haven't played more than twenty-five uh, regular season games or fifty uh, career games. And that's why, like a guy like Brogan Rafferty, who I'll talk about in a second, made the list. So that's basically it: twenty-two and uh, sorry, twenty-one and under. So under the, the age of 22 and or uh, you can be up to 25 years old but not played too many games in the NHL. Last year the Canucks were ranked number five in the entire league and graduating from this I guess this list given the criteria uh, criteria were Brock Besser, Adam Gaudet and Thatcher Demko. Three really good players obviously yet uh, you lose those three players but because of the who the Canucks have drafted they actually move up in the rankings from five to three. Again, only the Devils and Rangers are ahead of them. So let's talk about this. In Corey Pronman's estimation, the Vancouver Canucks are number three because of these top 10 prospects. And as I give the names, um, I'll kind of give the ranking he gave them because he had, he had six, in essence, tiers. You had special player, you had elite player, you had high-end player, you had very good player, legit NHL player, and then chance to make the NHL. So again, special, elite, high-end, very good, legit, and then, um, and, and then, you know, kind of a uh, bubble player. So the Canucks had basically one from, at least one from every category, except for the bubble player. So this is how he ranked them. Number one, Elias Pettersson, special player. Number two, Quinn Hughes, elite player. Some would argue he should be in the special player category and I, I kind of think that too but you know we're gonna we're not gonna argue too much about special versus elite that's still two really good players and that's the reason why the Canucks are so high so number one Pedersen special player number two Quinn Hughes elite player number three the silly put Coles in high end uh, high end player so um our first round draft pick for 2019 uh pick 10th overall he's there ranked as as number three behind Pedersen Hughes. You're not going to unseat those guys, but ranked as um, a, you know, a top-end, high-end player. Number four, Niels Hoglander, our second-round pick from the 2019 draft, listed as a very good NHL player, like potentially to be a very good NHL player. And then five through nine are all legit NHL players, so players that he thinks, Pronman thinks, will indeed make the Canucks if they haven't already. So number five is actually Brogan Rafferty, defenseman. Everyone thinks he'll have a legit shot at making the team next year. Number six is Ole Ulevi, another defenseman, 2015 draft pick, 2016 draft pick, excuse me, fifth overall, waiting for him to, to bust out. And a lot of people are saying, just like Rafferty will have a chance to make the third um, third pairing right side next year, Ulevi might have a chance to make the third pairing left side next year. So he's number six. Number seven is Zach McEwen, who's obviously already played some games with the NHL with the Vancouver Canucks, but hasn't played um, enough to age him out of this system at least. 
Number eight, number nine, two more defensemen. Jet Wu, right side. Jack Rathbone, left side. And then number 10, Michael DiPietro. Didn't give him actually a classification when it came to what tier he is in, but I think you put him as legit NHL player as well, hopefully. So there we go. You have basically five forwards, four defensemen, and one goalie. Pedersen, Hughes, Pakosin, Hoaglander, Rafferty, Yolevi, McEwen, Wu, Rathbone, and Di Pietro. Now, how did the Canucks go from five to three without, uh, and by losing Besser, Gaudet, and Demko? Like I said, it's because of the two guys that are number three and number four um, in Podkos and the Hoaglander. So people, despite, you know, giving away um, one of our draft picks last year in the JT Miller trade, people were really excited about uh, who we got in in Podkos and, and in Hoaglander. Um, and yeah, and people are excited for both of them. I, I've always said, I don't think either of them are going to make the team this year, at least out of training camp, because Puck Hosen still has one more year in his KHL contract. He could join the team actually later in the year once his team's eliminated from the playoffs next season. And for Hoaglander, I think it's either going to be, uh, he'll probably go back to Sweden for one more year. That's just my guess. But obviously, Canucks fans are very excited uh, about Hoaglander Puck Hosen, uh, um, our two picks from the 2019 draft, and Corey Pronman is is excited about them as well and that's uh, they're the big reason why they went up from five to three in Pronman's rankings number five Ra Rafferty number six Ulevi as I mentioned uh, both guys expected to make the team next year or at least have a shot at making the team as third pairing defensemen you know on the left side you still have Hughes and Edler on the right side you have you have Myers and one of Stan um, Tanev or Stetcher that's my guess or maybe you bring in a new guy and then at number seven, you have Zach McEwen. No qualms there. He's going to be a good player. In fact, he could make uh, Jake redundant. Uh, Jake redundant. Jake Vertanen redundant. We'll see. You know, I, I'm a little surprised that Jet Wu is ranked higher than Jack Rathbone, especially because other rankings have Rathbone uh, quite high, in, even in the top five in the kind of prospects. Um, but it's kind of cool. Again, some symmetry. Jet Wu's on the right side. Jack Rathbone's on the left side. So, you know, down the road, I'm, I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure if any of the guys, these guys scream top pairing defenseman. That's who Quinn Hughes is. But conceivably, you could have Rafferty and Wu on the right side and Yolevi and Rathbone on the left side. You know, that would, that would make for some decent depth down the road for sure. And then, of course, Michael DiPietro, um, number 10. We all love him. We love his, uh, he's a gamer. We love his effort. Um, he's kind of an afterthought right now as we figure out this whole Jacob Markstrom and Thatcher Demko situation. So overall, I think it's very encouraging, you know, um, up until maybe three years ago, we would say we wouldn't we didn't have much in the prospect pool, and that's one of the aftermaths of the way Mike Gillis ran the team. Sure, he thought, thought outside the box, gave us a really good chance to win. Of course, one game with from the Stanley Cup in 2011, but one fault that people attributed to him was that he didn't do much to build up our, our prospect pool. But you could say it started maybe with Horvat in 2013, then Jake in 14, 2014, and then. And then um, Brock Besser in 2015, Yolevi in 16, and then you start to add in guys like Demko and Mar uh, Demko and and Gaudet at that time, late round picks. And then of course 2017 was Pedersen, 2018 was Hughes, and then 19 was uh, Podkos and Hoglander. And we'll see what 2020 brings. Right now we don't have a draft pick, so we'll have to. Uh, I, I just realized I messed up earlier. We didn't give away any of our 2019 draft picks. Um, Actually, now that I think about it, uh, I don't want to start this whole video again. I think we did give away a draft pick in the JT Miller trade, but it was, um, it might have been like a high one, but it wasn't first or second round because that was, it was, um, that was Pod Coles and Hoglander. Now that I think about it, maybe it was a third or fourth rounder last year, and of course the first rounder this year, which first rounder went to Tampa for the JT Miller trade, now New Jersey. Second rounder went to LA with the, in the Tyler Trafoli trade. So, I think we've been talking about Jim Banning wanting to recoup some draft picks given that he doesn't have a pick in the top two rounds this year. We'll see about that. But today, I do want to talk about the guys that are in our system right now. So when you hear that list and when you hear the way that he ranked them, tell me, Canucks fans, do you agree with that ranking? Do you agree with the fact that the Canucks are ranked pretty high? Or do you think that's a little generous, actually? Um, of course, it's bolstered by the fact that Pedersen and Hughes are still uh, you know, ranked and considered as prospects according to according to this list and that's why they are indeed so high obviously the two guys that single-handedly sped up and and turned around or sped up our rebuild and turned around the franchise for the vancouver canucks so i'm not complaining it's probably the main reason why they are high so high on that ranking and i'd love to know your your thoughts
talk about the Canucks ranked number three compared to the rest of the league. Maybe talk about that comparison. And do you have um, any reservations about the way he ranked them or the way that he, he categorized them? Again, Pedersen, um, special player, Hughes, elite, Pod Colson, top end, Hoglander, very good, and then the rest, legit NHL players, potentially. And that, again, is Rafferty, Yolevi, McEwen, Wu, and, and uh, Rathbone, and then Michael DiPietro. So, Canucks fans, let me know what you think. I love reading lists like this when the Canucks place high because it shows that they are being noticed and valued outside of our own fan base. Granted, that doesn't mean anything on the ice, but you'd still much rather have people be talking about the future, the good future of the Vancouver Canucks team as opposed to a poor future or not talking about us at all. So Canucks fans, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. God bless, and go Canucks call.